There are a lot of legendary cards in Clash Royale. Being the highest rarity in Clash Royale for the majority of the game's history, there was something special about this rarity. Getting even one card from this rarity used to be a momentous occasion. But why should we care so much about this rarity compared to the other rarities? To make legendary cards extra exciting, any card in this rarity would be given a unique special ability to shake up the gameplay in ways other cards in other rarities didn't. On top of this, legendary cards would generally just be a little better on average than other rarities in the game, always having use and win rates a healthy card would need. This meant they were usually safe cards to upgrade as they wouldn't be killed and left to be dead like other certain cards. However, one day a legendary card would be added to Clash Royale that would break both of these rules, a card that had no unique ability and would be left practically dead for years in a row during her lifetime. A card that would get treatment like no other legendary card ever has. You probably even forgot about her until you saw the October loading screen. So why was this specific legendary not given a special ability? Why did they keep this legendary in such a weak spot for so long? How did she get to where she is now? Today I will be answering all of these questions and taking a deep dive into the history of Clash Royale's Night Witch. So where did the name Night Witch even come from? Why not Dark Witch? You already had a Dark Prince. Night just feels unusual and out of place. We need to look at Clash Royale's sister game, Clash of Clans, to answer this question. Now, the Night Witch was technically added to Clash Royale first, only weeks before being added to Clash of Clans. The reason I bring up Clash of Clans is because her being called the Night Witch makes a lot more sense when you see what was happening in this game. Clash of Clans had just gotten a major update before the Night Witch was added to Clash Royale that would add the Builder Base, which was an alternative game mode in Clash of Clans that added unique defenses and variations of troops from the main village. One troop in Clash of Clans was the Witch, and since most troops were getting a variation in the new base, the Witch would get one as well, and thus came the Night Witch. The word Night likely came from the Builder Base taking place at night, even though no other troops had the word Night in front of it. Now, although the Night Witch did technically come to Clash Royale first, since it wasn't added to the Builder Base until a few weeks after the update had already launched, I think it's reasonable to assume that the Night Witch was being worked on for Clash of Clans and Clash Royale around the same time since the name of this troop makes way more sense in Clash of Clans. This is all just speculation though. To me though, this makes the most sense. Now let's get to her official release in Clash Royale. We'll talk a little bit more about Clash of Clans later, but this video is a Clash Royale historical analysis, not Clash of Clans. As I said before, the Night Witch would appear in Clash Royale on May 29th, 2017. The reason I say appear instead of released is because during 2017, Clash Royale loved having special challenges for legendary cards where the only way to unlock it for a small period of time was by beating the challenge. This was nice in a way because this meant if a legendary card was broken, it wouldn't be flooding the game since most players couldn't even get it. Every one of these challenges worked a little differently for each legendary, and the Night Witch's special challenge would be a draft challenge. This meant for two days, the only way to unlock this card was through this challenge. Only a small percentage of players would actually beat it though, as you needed to get to 12 wins without getting 3 losses, and this was a time before continues or pass royale, so you can imagine it was much tougher then. Along with challenges for legendary cards at the time, cards were also being announced in waves of 4. When I considered this fact, I thought one of the reasons she may be a legendary was simply to even out the number of each legendary being released. This is something Supercell has done before as they confirmed that the only reason the Goblin Joel was an epic card instead of a legendary card is because they had released the Mother Witch right before it and didn't want to release two legendaries in a row. However, this couldn't have been the reasoning in this case because the other three cards announced in this wave were the Bats, Heal Spell, and the Bandit. This seemed like even more of a reason for the Night Witch to be an epic because then it would have evened out the rarities released in this wave. The next wave was perfectly consistent having one of each rarity being added, they clearly did try to be somewhat consistent overall. So why not make the Night Witch an epic when her abilities were practically the same as the regular witch, just spawning a different troop of which were both common rarity? There's a lot to unpack here, so let's look into the function of the Night Witch in May of 2017. The Night Witch of May of 2017 versus November 2022 are very different. In my opinion, at launch, the Night Witch did actually deserve the legendary status, but it's not for the reason you think. 
Many players wondered why the Night Witch was a legendary card at the time. She didn't even seem to have any unique ability, but there were many players that believed her to be a legendary card because when she died, bats would spawn wherever she died. She will spawn 4 bats in a 2.5 tile radius. This is what makes her unique as a legendary card. I really never thought this reasoning was justification for legendary status. A legendary ability to me was a troop that had insane range, a troop that was combined with spell abilities, or a spell that could knock back massive troops. Night Witch just felt like your typical support card. There was one major difference from the Night Witch of 2017 versus today, in which my opinion made it feel legendary. The Bats. And I don't mean the Death Bats, but just the Bats in general. I know this sounds really dumb because the Night Witch has always and will always have bats, but this was different back then because the bat troop was a troop completely unique to the Night Witch. Although bats were announced at the same time as the Night Witch, during these first few weeks, the Night Witch spawned its own unique troop that did not appear in any other card, unlike the regular Witch. Bats were also much stronger in 2017 versus nowadays. The major difference was that the bats' hit speed was only 1 second rather than today's bats which have a hit speed of 1.3 seconds. This is because the bats card may have originally intended to have 4 bats instead of 5, meaning each individual bat's strength made up for the fewer count. I say may because the bats were actually technically nerfed before they even came out. Don't ask me how that works. Bats back then also spawned instantly after the Night Witch was played, rather than the first wave taking a second to spawn in. With the four death bats on top of this, this led to the Night Witch being a bat spawning beast. Not to mention she spawns bats every 5 seconds, which was faster than the witch's spawn speed of 7 seconds, which meant she could build up swarms of bats much faster. When she was placed, she would always leave a mess of bats all over the arena. But what did this mean? With the ability to spawn so many bats, she was a great counter to air cards like Balloon. Yes, this card, who couldn't even attack air, could take out a balloon without it getting a hit on the tower. And remember that the bats were much stronger back then, which meant even one wave could stop an entire balloon. This meant you didn't even have to place the Night Witch in the back and let it build up bats to stop a balloon, you could literally use it as a reactionary. Playing a ground targeting melee troop in this way felt very different and unique, which made her feel legendary. The Night Witch's stats were incredibly different than today, so just how strong was she? Three Night Witches, another fireball, but look at that, a million bats, wow! Guys, look how much damage this Night Witch right here is going to do. We got 35,000 bats on that tower. Definitely ridiculously strong, like, she hits as hard as a mini P.E.K.K.A., she can take shots from, like, mini P.E.K.K.A.s, P.E.K.K.A.s. Be upset right now, um, those bats, yes, I love it when people do that, don't lightning, guys, don't, don't lightning. <laughs> Don't lightning the witch, she's gonna die, she's gonna make bats, and then she's gonna crush your tower. Do you know how to spell GG because uh, I need help with oh, it? Oh, look on that right side! Oh my bats! A user called APOC on Reddit posted this deck and showed a video of him playing it to 12 wins inside of challenges. They're going four night witches going down, look at all of those night witches and all of those bats. Oh, look at the value, all the night witches taking down all the skeletons. Come on, let's go, Night Witch. Let's go. Take out the minion horde, baby dragon. Let's go. Okay, and log. Oh, the Night Witch died, but that's okay. We still got a ton of bats going on. And just, we still have one bat alive. I tried to zoom in. I've been playing too much Clash of Clans lately. Uh, why did I go golem there? That was a terrible idea because, oh, never mind. It's okay. The Night Witch was extremely strong when it was first released. And when I say strong, I mean if you look at every card's initial release in Clash Royale history, Night Witch may have had the biggest impact of all of them. Actually, now I have to edit this script because I know everyone's going to write about how the Phoenix had a bigger impact, but I wrote this script before the update. But here I am acknowledging it, so there you go. I know cards like Royal Ghost were really strong upon release, as well as the Royal Recruits, but I truly believe the Night Witch topped them both. The Night Witch also had a much longer range, being 1.85 tiles, which is longer than even the Prince has today. And remember how much stronger her bat spawning ability was, she spawns them much faster and each bat was significantly stronger compared to today. Not only spawning her first wave much faster making her a good reactionary, but spawning 4 death bats wherever she died. And trust me, these 4 death bats added so much value to this card as you'll come to see later. Her health has actually never changed, so it's really the only stat that remains consistent throughout its entire history. I hope this gives you an idea of just how strong the Night Witch truly was. 
Countering her and the bats she spawned in behind a tank was simply impossible. These bats distracted cards like Inferno Tower really well, so when a tower focused on a tank, the bats would quickly swarm in, attacking everything. This made her pair especially well with tanky win conditions. This card wasn't exactly everywhere because unlocking legendaries was still relatively difficult, but plenty of players had gotten their hands on her and she was quickly making her way into a ton of popular decks. In addition to being a great tank supporter, she was appearing a lot in graveyard decks and a newly forming archetype called Bridge Bam. This deck would have cards like Bandit, Battle Ram, and Night Witch, all cards released in the first few months of 2017. It was really showing for the Night Witch that she could fit into all these different archetypes. This card had practically taken over the entire game day one after being added to Clash Royale. She was so overpowered that she was worth shoving into any archetype because of how versatile she was. She could deal with any situation really well. She was so strong that even the mirror was viable in this meta, which it hadn't been, well, pretty much ever before this point. Players knew nerfs were inevitable, but the Night Witch wouldn't be going down so easily. 12 days after the Night Witch was released, she would receive her first change. Even though the Night Witch was arguably the strongest card ever in the history of the game up to that point, Supercell didn't nerf her too bad. The one thing Supercell really focused on was her bats. It was clear that the bats were just too much, so all of the changes focused on that. She would now spawn waves of bats every 6 seconds instead of every 5 seconds. She would also only spawn 3 bats upon her death instead of 4. And finally, her first wave of bats would be toned down to 1.5 seconds instead of spawning instantly. Actually, while doing research for this video, it didn't give me a specific number, so I had to find gameplay from this era just to slow it down and figure it out for myself, so 1.5 may not be 100% accurate, but it's definitely around that. This change to the Night Witch didn't affect her too badly though. The bats themselves were still very strong and the Night Witch herself dealt a lot of damage. So a few months later, on August 11th, 2017, she would get another nerf and this time Supercell was making it proper. Her damage would be reduced by 9% and fun fact, her damage has actually never changed since then. This is the only time in her history her damage has actually been changed. On top of this, her range would be going from 1.85 tiles to 1.65 tiles. It seemed ridiculous that the support card had the same range as a prince with a lance, so this change made sense. On top of all of this, her bat spawn speed would be slowed again causing each wave of bats to be 7 seconds apart. This doesn't have anything to do with the topic of this video, but I found this time to be interesting because the regular witch had recently been buffed and had 5 seconds in between her skeleton spawn waves and now the night witch spawn time of each wave was what the witch's spawn rate was before her buff. So it's kinda like they swapped. Anyway, on top of all of these nerfs, her death bats would be nerfed again going from 3 to 2. This nerf was certainly harsher than the first one, so how would the Night Witch fare going into the meta now? The Night Witch didn't seem like she was in a bad position at first. Use and win rates of cards are really difficult to find before 2018, but luckily sometimes I find a YouTube video with statistics in them, and in this Clash with Ash video it showcased the use and win rates for the first few weeks after the August nerf. It appears the Night Witch clearly had a very good use and win rate. This was interesting in watching the Night Witch in this era, because even with no major changes, it went from still pretty strong, to half decent, to niche, to trash. In this era, the only, and I mean only card Night Witch was viable with, was Golem. Arguably Night Witch had a higher dependence on this one card than any card had ever had. This ultimately is when their relationship really formed and Golem Night Witch became one of the game's most iconic combos in its history. The combo was pretty strong throughout this entire era, and it would slightly fluctuate over time depending on what was going on within the meta. A lot of people hated Golem Night Witch, and this is why I believe Supercell wouldn't buff the Night Witch for a really long time. But for a while, Night Witch was considered the worst legendary in Clash Royale. Number 13 on the list is going to be... Night Witch. I love Night Witch, but she's only really in one deck. Number 13 on the list is Night Witch. Her use is really limited to beatdown decks. You seldom see Night Witch used in anything other than Golem decks. So the worst legendary card, in the opinion of yours truly, is the Night Witch. I just think that her success is so directly tied to only Golem decks. But there's been a lot of moving and shaking, a lot of kind of uh, jockeying for position in a legendary card pool 
that are all really strong, with the exception of maybe number 17, the Night Witch. This was unusual because anytime legendaries were poor in the past, they would be buffed up to a certain degree of viability that the Night Witch wasn't receiving. Eventually, she even started getting replaced in Golem decks. And even in Golem decks, she's starting to be replaced here and there by the Ice Wizard Tornado combination. Despite all of the other legendaries being viable on their own merit, Night Witch didn't have any independence. For over two years, Night Witch would receive no major changes. She did actually receive two nerfs for the sake of balancing other cards in the game though. Her initial bat spawn speed went from 1.5 seconds to 1.3 seconds, which is above, but that would come at the cost of a bat hit speed increase of 0.1 seconds, which meant bats were overall worse. In July of 2019, her range was simplified to match other cards, so it would go from 1.65 tiles to 1.6 tiles. It didn't make much of a difference, but the last thing she needed was any type of nerf. But hey, at least she had the same range as the Prince again. The Night Witch had been nerfed hard in 2017. She broke the game and served her time for it. The Golem meta had been evolving with a lot of popular Golem decks removing the Night Witch entirely. It was time to give her another chance. In October of 2019, seemingly out of nowhere, the Night Witch was given her Death Bats back. It seems like a very minor change, but for a lot of players, it was nice to see this card finally getting some love. There was another big thing that happened this month that would help the Night Witch though. A new card would be added, the Elixir Golem, that worked almost as a substitute for the Golem. An alternative to Golem meant a new partner for the Night Witch. Not only was it an alternative, but it was an extremely strong alternative. Now, the Night Witch was practically considered to be almost a dead card up to this point and only received two additional Death Bats. Two measly bats. Yes, the Night Witch had four Death Bats before, but her spawn rate was still 7 seconds and the bats were overall much weaker than in 2017. Despite a meta filled with witches and poisons and executioners, the Night Witch went from being a dead card to one of the best cards in the game again. Two measly Death Bats was all she needed to rise to the top again. How could such a small change make such a big difference? The answer seemed obvious at the time. Elixir Golem is just way too strong and Night Witch synergizes with it. Nerf the Elixir Golem and the Night Witch will die with it. A lot of the player base agreed that the Night Witch was not overpowered, but simply a result of the crazy meta surrounding her. Because of this, she actually slid under the radar for the next set of balance changes. Despite every other OP card getting nerfed, Night Witch would remain the same. But unlike what people predicted, even though the other cards slowly phased out, Night Witch would not follow suit. She remained to be a top card despite the Elixir Golem's use and win rates dropping. Despite her consistently high use and win rates, the Night Witch would again avoid the nerf hammer in the following set of balance changes. People just could not accept the fact that two measly bats made this card from dead to top 5. So when January came along, Supercell would finally step in. Even with further nerfs to the Elixir Golem, the Night Witch's use and win rates remained high. The Elixir Golem archetype was seeing a new wave of strength this month as well because of the release of the Battle Healer, which worked as a great synergizer with the Elixir Golem. The next move seemed obvious. Two bats made the Night Witch way too weak, and four bats made it way too strong. So the next move was to nerf it to three bats, right? Obviously. Well, no. Instead, Supercell decided to go into an entirely different direction. On January 7th, 2020, the Night Witch's first attack would be 17% slower, and her first wave of bats would be changed to 3.5 seconds instead of 1.3 seconds. This made it consistent with the Witch's first spawn wave. So what was Supercell's reasoning for not just decreasing the Night Witch's death bats to 3? They stated it was because they wanted to keep it consistent to the Clash of Clans Night Witch. The second I read this statement, I knew it was not a valid point. Keep it consistent? The Night Witch in Clash of Clans wasn't even a melee troop, it attacked like the normal witch. This troop was always incredibly different across these games. Anyway though, it seems like Supercell actually knew what they were doing because this change actually made the card fairly balanced. Although it was still heavily tied to Golem, the card was in a better position than it was from August of 2017 to September of 2019. The Night Witch was still a tad strong, but its bats would be reworked over time with their hit speed going from 1.1 seconds to 1.3 seconds and their first hit going from 0.8 seconds to 0.6 seconds. After these bat changes, the Night Witch was practically perfectly balanced. It consistently remained at a use rate of around 7-9% to and a win rate of 49-53%. to 
for most of 2021, the Night Witch and Bats would remain in this exact state. The Night Witch was fixed. You couldn't hope of getting her more balanced than this. So in September of 2021, the Night Witch would receive a rework. Wait, what? Reworking a balanced card? What was the point of this? Well, since this card was so dependent on Golem, you might think the rework was to fix that, but it wasn't. Well, despite the Night Witch's use and win rates remaining fair, it was apparent her death bats were causing some other problems. This rework was actually a response to the prominent clone meta that was going on at the time. Cloning a Night Witch meant so many death bats would spawn when a push was taken out. Golem clone decks were actually very popular at this time, but Night Witch herself was still balanced. So this rework was meant to keep the Night Witch at the same strength she was before, but making her synergy with clone worse. Since clone is one of those cards you can't really nerf, the Night Witch had to be the focus. So this rework would begin by removing all of her death bats. So much for keeping her consistent to the Clash of Clans Night Witch, I guess. Her first wave of bats would also go down to 1 second, as well as her bat spawn speed going back down to 5 seconds. Actually looking at the notes, it said it was reduced from 4 seconds, not 3.5 seconds, even though it clearly says it was changed to 3.5 seconds in the change before that. So either this card got a secret change at one point, or one of these is wrong. But if my memory serves me right, it was never at 4 seconds. This change ultimately did hurt the Night Witch of course, because she didn't work well with Clone anymore, which was very popular at the time. But she was still viable and her win rates actually didn't change that much. This change actually seems to be pretty good at balancing her out. It seems like they were trying to keep the total number of bats she spawns to be the same, but not guaranteed. So a cloned Night Witch wouldn't be able to spawn so many bats, whereas the regular Night Witch could. One of the things Supercell has always said when balancing Witch and Night Witch is that they want the value of this card to be keeping her alive for much longer so she can spawn more bats. It was actually pretty impressive how balanced this card remains despite how many reworks she was receiving. Now since these bats have gotten heavily nerfed since the last time the Witch spawned bats this fast, it wasn't quite as strong as before obviously. But the Night Witch was certainly not dead and she wasn't the worst legendary anymore. Many players believed her to be dead after this point, but this was quickly figured out not to be the case. She had so much more versatility now than in 2017, as now instead of just having to rely on Golem, she could also now rely on Golem, but in pink. However, as clones started to fall out of the meta, Night Witch did too. Her win rate was alright, but that's because she was keeping her spot in the same couple of decks she performed well in. Her biggest long-standing issue was beginning to face the light again. She was still better now than the state she was in before her October 2019 buff, but this card would certainly need some attention. Come June of 2022, 9 months after this rework, the Night Witch would see a buff. Her hit speed would be changed for the first time ever, going from 1.5 seconds to 1.3 seconds. A 0.2 second hit speed buff for most troops is massive. In the past, in fact, a 0.2 hit speed nerf took the Valkyrie from being one of the strongest cards in the game to about average. A 0.2 second hit speed decrease was a lot for a card that still had a good win rate, but it didn't have a biggest impact with the Night Witch. This card's power was mostly in her bats, so buffing the Night Witch's stats without changing the bats would make less of a difference than it would in cards like Hog Rider. This 0.2 second hit speed decrease wouldn't help her a lot in golem decks, but help her more in other types of decks since the hit speed didn't matter as much in golem, but the waves of bats did. This change is the last change this card has ever received, so now let's go over the Night Witch in the game today. The last change obviously made the Night Witch better, but didn't raise her use or win rates much at all. All the decks you'll ever see her being used in are Golem or Elixir Golem decks. The Night Witch just never really got over this dependency issue. Even when she was synergizing with the clone spell well, it was mostly just Golem clone decks. Other than Elixir Golem, the Night Witch really never saw her dependency from Golem ever really go away. Her role has always been very specific and consistent. The only time in Clash Royale history you can really only see her being used in other types of decks was when she first came out. And even then, Golem Night Witch was already emerging as one of the most popular combos. I think this will forever be the future of the Night Witch. A change in this dependency would require a massive rework and an entirely change of function for this card, and I don't think Supercell would ever do that. It's just not worth doing and would ruin her for the people that do like playing her in Golem decks. This change of function has been tried before and ultimately frustrated the players that use those cards because of the function of the card no longer worked in their deck. The card is certainly viable, but not oppressive and annoying as it used to be. So even though this card is niche, I think it's okay how it is today. I do personally kind of miss her death bats, but I think those days are over for good. Being known as one of the, if not the most overpowered cards in Clash Royale history to being considered the worst, back to being one of the best again, the legendary card with seemingly no legendary ability with a heavy dependence on Golem to remain relevant, this card has certainly been through an interesting journey and certainly left her mark in the game's history. 
Although heavily dependent on Golem, it is great to see she at least has a place unlike her sister. Although her future seems to be very predictable and boring, she's definitely a key part in keeping the Golem meta somewhat alive, and the archetype would never quite feel the same without her. She's found her place, and although it's limiting, I think it's okay for her. Thank you to everyone once again for the incredible support on this channel. This channel hit 20,000 subscribers since my last video, and I'm so grateful to every one of you that subscribed. Let me know what card I should cover next and what other topics you want me to cover in future videos. As you guys already know, as the present turns into history, I'll always have more work to do.